All right, guys, welcome back to Driving Life. You thought you got rid of us, but we, <laughs> we are still here. Uh, I am your co-host, Owen Trinkler. Next to me, Dobbin Degelau. Yeah. Dobbin, how you doing today, man? I am I'm great. I'm doing really well, man. It's been a yeah. while. Good to be back uh, at our home at Showtime Motorsports. Franklin Road Apparel, Mr. Ken Twaits for letting us, he did let us come back. Yeah, so, yeah which yeah. we kind of had forgotten about that yeah. to ask. And they've got some major changes. So we got to have Ken. We'll have Ken on because major on. changes going on. Yeah, he's got a lot program. of, he's got a lot of stuff going yeah. on right now. It's going on that way. You can't in the see Trans Am world. But, yeah, so we're looking right behind us here um, in front of us. But uh, yes, tons of stuff going on here. So that'll be another show, another day, another time. Completely. Yeah, we'll probably get him after the first race and, and talk about what he's yeah. doing. On, yeah, because they're getting ready to head to Sebring. They are. They are set, headed probably on Monday. These things are yeah. leaving town, so yeah. it's a couple of days from what, what we're recording right now. But yeah, we just had a little bit of break. Uh, Daytona was a big race for us for the IMSA series, and um, we'll get more into that here in a little bit. But that's why we've been kind of a little on a high just a little bit, yeah. you know, a little busy there in December and January. But we're back full force and uh, got a great guest for you here at the beginning of the show. Uh, we'll kind of get more into how TGM's Relux 24, how the two weeks kind of went and uh, on the back half, but um, Evan from uh, Track Racer, and they've been a great, I, I guess now they're a great su supporter of driving life yeah. and me personally, um, because I'm going to get full force into the sim stuff because yeah. of him. And we're, we'll talk a little bit about that, what they did at Daytona and uh, it was really cool. So uh, enjoy Evan here, guys, and then uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. guys and we're back uh this week is a really special guest it is evan jeff chich from track racer i think i got that right um evan how you doing today man great can't complain i'm here joined by you too i mean talking all the good stuff about life so yeah. it doesn't get much better than talking about uh racing sim ra whether it's sim racing live racing you know whatever we're all about all of it yeah living the dream yeah there you go let's go back a little bit owen um and kind of talk about so daytona we, we've been through daytona which yeah you, you had a pretty good week we're a great to, week yeah yeah we're gonna have to talk about that yeah uh at some point here in a little bit as well but um we also had an opportunity through a lot of other people why don't you go into the details because maybe you know it better than i do but yeah so i mean I, and evan i Track racer, and we're going to get into this, like what track racer is and, and uh, you know, it's a sim chassis, but I guess let's start with your background. Well, again, you came to Daytona and we did a really cool thing at Daytona and um, I didn't get to see the rig there, but we're going to get into what the rig was doing there at Daytona. But uh, tell me your background, just kind of how, yeah. how did you end up where you are today with track racer? So believe it or not, I, uh, it goes a little bit back. I, uh, I'm actually not from the States, as you guys can tell by this accent and the speak a little funny. It's a long story, but I fell ill, had surgery, and I lost about, I want to say, two thirds of my jaw, uh, December of 2020, and fell ill. And uh, before that, I was pretty yoked, like 280 pounds walking around. Uh, I got some silly videos of me deadlifting four or five, like it's, you know, <laughs> for fun. But uh, so I needed to recover, bought myself some toys. I always was in games. I was at that time working for a logistics business, bought a bunch of track racer stuff, and it came mangled and reached out to the guy that owns it. And I was like, hey, let's talk. We can do this better. And here I am. Yeah. And that, <laughs> that was Matt, who I, I've met Matt through Zoom. Yeah. He's, mm -hmm. in, he's in Australia, correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a guy. Yeah. yeah. So So just like that, what, so what what ended up happening after that conversation? And so you get a hold of him, and you're like, "Hey, we can do this better." What? So, 
So I reached out to him because what happened is my order arrived and it was, you know, being taped up in the parking lot by UPS because the boxes were thrown around. Turns out that they were just getting started in the United States. They were didn't have a warehouse set up. Now, that being said, track race is huge in Europe and Australia. They've been around since 2008. This guy's one of the original frame builders and has been in the industry since ages. And honestly, uh, you know, I know it sounds biased and I'm extremely critical myself and everyone I work with, but he really has been a trendsetter setter when it comes to a lot of the things that are in the industry today, you know, Matt himself. Uh, that being said, my stuff it wasn't delivered like it was, and I'm very opinionated. So I called him. I was like, I can we can deliver this better, faster. And uh, I joined and I started the U.S. branch of Track Racer. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty impressive. So when I got my sim rig, and this was, I don't know, December I guess of last year. So this was before any of this ever happened. And I did the research, uh, you know, on on who to go with and, you know, watch YouTube videos and just kind of did a little bit of research and everything for me pointed to track racer, um, which was the direction I went. Um, and my son and I have had, we've had our sim rig up since right before Christmas, I guess, yeah. uh, you know, kind of beating and banging around on it. Um, and it works phenomenally well. I mean, one of, that was one of the reasons I went with track racers because it just the simplicity of it, right. It's elegantly simple. Um, and it came with a, you know, I, I got the, the reclining red bucket racing seat. It's, it's awesome. Every, everything about it has been phenomenal. Um, and then this whole thing happens as we get closer to Daytona and, you know, Owen and I are talking and then he's telling me, you know, Steve, uh, um, Palladino has got some things that they're yeah. all working on and everything. And it's about, like track race. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I just got one of those. This is awesome. You know, <laughs> yeah. let's talk about this. Um, and then, uh, we show yeah. up and, we show up in Daytona and you're there with a U-Haul. Tell us about, about that whole thing. Oh, so those two and a half days of being awake. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, for, for, for some of the uh, uh, you know, people listening, like right now, the, the sim industry is growing at an exponential rate. And a lot of it has to do with Quite frankly, the technology is becoming far more enticing, far more intricate, and far more accessible. And so these businesses like Track Racer and so forth, they, for the last couple of years, have exponential growth. And um, it, 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 how does, it, it was, you know, a backlog of issues when it comes to you know, clearing customs, as you guys see on the news every day, so on. So I was piecing everything together. Literally, the morning of departure, the drive hub arrived, the SimiCube 2 Pro. Yeah. <laughs> and unlike when you guys transported, I have actually pictures. I had all these bungee cords. I uh, elevated most of the rig off the ground, so it was floating the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> My father-in-law, he, uh, I'm sorry, oh, uh, uh, he, uh, what do you call it? He's the one that put all that together. So when we transport, not, none of it got banged up. That's why everything arrived like mint. Yeah. So you get to Daytona and we put this thing together. So I think the original idea behind this was to, um, so just so to kind of let everybody know what mm -hmm. we we're doing there. We go to Daytona, Owen races every year. And there, I don't know how many guys went this year? Uh, I feel like 20, but I could be off a little bit. Yeah. So we had somewhere between, you know, 12 and 20, <laughs> yeah. 20 guys done it. We had two motor home oh, yeah. in the infield. And so the idea was to put this sim racer in between these two motor homes with all the fans walking by and all this access to this sim racing rig, which was great. So you guys got there Thursday, get this thing set up, which was a monumental task. And, and you all handled that phenomenally. Um, <laughs> And so we're all we're all messing with it till she's all, well basically all night long. You know somebody's in and out of the out of the rig racing. It's got triple what, 55 inch monitors on it and um, just the whole nine yards. I mean this thing is absolutely top of the line, first class, whatever. Well then Saturday or no Friday morning, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. That one. So yeah, Friday, Friday morning. morning yep. 
I look over and you're pulling the seat off, the track racer seat off and putting a Recaro seat on there. So how did that come about? Was that you or how did that happen? So Steve and the boys, you know, the 12 to 20 some <laughs> fellas hanging out, they said, listen, uh, last night we were all full around to like three, four in the morning and people were freaking out. They thought that cars were flying off the track because of those speakers because we were so oh, loud. Yeah, the, that thing was all, they, they were uh, pretty loud. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, what do you call drone dog cars at some one point? But long story, just of it, they're like, hey, uh, let's move it. Let's get more people to see it and whatnot. I was like, yeah, let's find a platform. And Ricardo said like, bring it here uh, because BMW and uh, what do you call it? Lamborghini both had uh, our competitor there from, uh, I believe it was uh, Rimotech. And uh, they had a different target audience what they were focused on, you know? And so we parked between them and then, you know, you, you saw the carnage of people <laughs> that started gathering. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I heard. Yeah. Cause I, unfortunately I, on Friday I, I was working and, um, <laughs> But I did hear that you took it over there and put a Recaro seat on it. And I heard the line was like ridiculously long to drive this thing. Yeah. You were, yeah. you were over there the better part of that afternoon into the early evening. And just so everybody knows this, the way we operate, right? We just literally lifted the entire, the entire thing up, threw it in the back of a pickup truck and moved you know, it, drove it through the midfield, <laughs> the infield. Yeah. Daytona, uh, unloaded oh, yeah. it at Recaro, put a tent over top of it and proceeded to mm -hmm. have a line 50 people deep for the next five hours. Oh yeah. I mean, it got net. It, people got a little rowdy because they were upset. We had to cut, uh, what is it from, uh, three to two laps, uh, just yep. because it, got, it was just getting ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, and Edvin, I wasn't there for, for this when you guys were moving this, but that probably shows um when i drove the rig for the first time was actually back in nashville when we got it back here but how rigid the the rig is is tr120 i think is that it's a new rig that's going to be distributed yep. in the u.s is the is the one that you brought to daytona but that shows you how well it to yep. me that you can move it and how rigid it is it, driving it it gives you good feedback but also in that you know move it <laughs> It came from Tampa to Daytona, then went yeah. to Daytona to back to Nashville. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, then little same got, thing. It got moved around to Daytona. Yeah, I I put it in the back of a trailer, a sixteen foot you know enclosed trailer, strapped it down, and drove it back here, and it was absolutely spotless when we got here. Uh, you no, know, I'm happy to hear that. And is that some of the technology? I mean, I'm new to all this. Basically, uh, yeah. Is that what what set, what what separates Track Racer from everybody else? Well, so a lot of these companies are, uh, uh, how do I say it, uh, have their own unique approaches in the way they do it. The way Track Racer designed it is the one that you're getting is an aluminum extrusion 80-20 frame. It is as rigid as can be. It goes on motion platforms, and it's, it's the mother of all stiffness. And also uh, scalability for adjustment, upgradability, and whatnot but also the intricacy of building it and assembling it and really measuring things out is a uh, time consuming. It isn't necessarily for everyone. And, and so we have two uh, variants. We have our tubular design, which is a quicker setup, which has a somewhat less of a range when it comes to adjustability versus what do you call it? Uh, the full extreme aluminum uh, extrusion, which what you got the TR120. And like you said, it's just now starting to roll out in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. And I have the one I got is the, is the round tube, uh, you know, RS6 chassis. Yeah. And, you know, my son and I put that together on a Saturday afternoon. I mean, the, the instructions were great. It was super simple to walk through that. Um, everything went together really well. I mean, obviously the engineering, the fit and the finish is top notch. I mean, we had not one single hiccup and I was, uh, you know, turning laps that evening. Um, you know, it was, it's just a really great product. Well, I want to talk about engineering. If you look at our upcoming TRX platform, and this is where I kind of want to talk to you, Donovan, as a friend and the salesman, see, I will give you a serious discount, my friend. And then you can show off both Owen over here, Steve, Chandler, and all the boys, because the TRX is going to be our newest frame that's launching this year. And we did it with partnership with Alpine. And if you go on our website, we just start taking pre-orders. It has a new unique seat that's to itself. It's fully adjustable from F1 to GT 
racing all on the fly. Just little pins you pull in or down. It will have telescopic adjusted uh, steering wheel rack and so forth. That'll be but, nice. Yeah. Yep. Especially and when we go between, fly. you know, me, I'm 6'1", and my son is four six <laughs> so <laughs> when i get in there i've got to re basically rebuild the thing every time i sit down to you know to to take some laps to run some laps so um but check it out but it's yeah I, i'll definitely go check it out as soon as we get done here uh and take a look but um nonetheless i mean having said that <clears throat> this thing is i mean it's absolutely perfect for for where I'm at right now, you know, as a, as a beginner, mm -hmm. as a newbie kind of into the sim racing, uh, you know, situation, uh, I couldn't have asked for a better setup, you know, not to mean that's not to say I won't get a better setup, <laughs> Oh, you will. but this you one will. just, it just has been, it's been great. Um, and then of course, you know, when you, when you go down and you really see what you can put together, um, you know, the monitors, in fact, I think when I got in and sat down initially, I was just telling Owen this earlier. Um, when I got sat down initially and started running laps with the monitors, the way they were set up, I got a little bit of vertigo and had to get oh, yeah. the bearings back. I remember, I remember I was right behind you, maybe like two feet or so. And your wife was like pointing for me to like, you know, pay attention. And I turned over. Yeah. It's see the monitors you mentioned earlier, they're not 55 inches. They actually have 40 inch monitors. They just came out. Okay. They're 165 Hertz refresh rate with one millisecond input latency. And they're G Sync compliant. That's why it's the it's they look great on camera, and they made you a little nauseous. It's almost VR like immersion when yeah. because it. Good. No, I just, that's what I was gonna say. It was just so. As soon as I sat down and and started driving, it was almost like, like my mind had to wrap itself around the fact that I wasn't actually moving because it felt like, it felt mm -hmm. like I was moving. You get so immersed in it that it hit for me it, it took me a minute and steve was standing there as well and he he kind of chuckled because he said the same thing he's like yeah i got vertigo the first couple of times i sat in it and you have to get acclimated to it um because it is it just it just draws you right in it's insane how cool it is i don't know i mean like what i'll say is i'm not a real man so when i get in there and i get sick i just stay quiet pretend like nothing happened step out and blame the game glitching out like, of course i know how to drive yeah i know what i'm doing <laughs> please the, the oh, best no. was my youngest went over there and like kicked everybody's butt over there like oh, we, went, yeah. we went over there um thursday night later on and he got on there and Chandler's like, Oh my gosh, he's like kicking butt. He was driving Laguna. I'm like, has he been on one? I said, no, not really. But I mean, he races go. -karts. Yeah, no, <laughs> it was, like, it was fun to watch him. And he, there Cause he came back on Friday. He came back on Friday. Yeah. yeah probably. Yeah. And sat down and was like taking names. I think he was making bets. Was think, he make, yeah, he'll he start, he'll start betting you for money yeah. too. He's exactly. like a little hustler. So. Yeah. Brant was, Brant was uh, killing it over there. It was awesome. Um, Evan, kind of talk. I mean, first time to Daytona, you know, Rolex 24 yep. weekend. I mean, give me your thoughts. You know, I, I, so, I hate that you and I just like, we, we, I know we talked by tech, but I completely missed you the whole weekend that with the time that you were there. Yeah. So, a like, little context. I wanted to thank you as well for the opportunity to be there, you know, no, on multiple, on multiple occasions, not. because to be frank with you, it was my first time out since my surgery, right? Yeah. Um, it wasn't easy, you know what I mean? Like, so it was a blast. Like, yeah. just start to finish. Well, you know it was I mean? a blast for us as well. I'm glad you and your wife, Kaylee, were correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you guys were both there, and it was it was so much fun. <clears throat> you know, it's it's always fun when you can stand back and watch somebody else. That is, you know, you're you're such a professional and a perfectionist and watching you put that together and making sure that everything went well for us, uh, you know, and that everything ran, not only ran properly, but at the highest level, uh, you know, you went way over and above and it just worked out so well. And then to go over to the Recaro, you know, and see that line of people, I know we posted some stuff, uh, you know, on Instagram and, uh, you know, some other places. Um, it was, I, I know you had a good time there and, but trust me, I think, for those of us that were, you know, watching you, we had as much fun, you know, it's always fun to share those experiences with people at the racetrack. No, yeah, I mean, it's uh, my wife, my father-in-law, as I was mentioning to uh, 
Owen here. Sorry, just a second. He is a huge Dale Earnhardt, the senior fan, had his jacket. He's oh, yeah. gone to the races. This was his first non NASCAR race. You are the first non NASCAR driver in the garage on the poster, you know, and he has worked for uh, Dodge for what three decades. He's like one of the top three lemon inspectors, whatnot. He became like this giant GT, you know, race car like fan. And, like he's looking everything up on Owen now. And awesome. whatnot. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a utter, like just a blast. Um, um, I, I tried there. to give him an Earnhardt move there at the end. I was like, <laughs> start on Friday. I'd, so. say, <laughs> I'd say it worked out pretty well. And we'll probably get into some details yeah, of this we'll at a later it, yeah. later date. But when you go from yeah, yeah. You drive from 40th to first, Owen, that's pretty Earnhardt like. Hey, buddy. That's my boy. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. So <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So what's next on the on the horizon for you, Edvin, and, and for track racer? I know we've been talking about some new products that are coming out and you know, mm -hmm. how's the you know, I don't know if we want to get into supply chain issues. I mean, how are you guys battling that? It seems like uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like bring up. <laughs> it's 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 a it's an everyday fight uh, with logistics. Luckily, uh, for track races, as I mentioned prior to this, I had the opportunity uh, to work at a company called Arrive Logistics. They're based out of Austin, Texas. They're uh, a multi-billion-dollar uh, revenue freight brokerage. And I had the privilege of working there from when they were just real small. And I helped with a huge team reverse engineer some, you know, old tech and fit it on this amazing new platform that they have and so forth. So that helps track racer uh, with help like companies like that get our inventory across the board and that we just put in place. Uh, what's uh, in line for track racer is as a business, the company has a lot of growth potential. of it is we're just chatting right now with uh, Steve, you know, on some of these things that we're growing. But uh, mostly I feel like uh, the, there needs to be like a common platform where people can get together, socialize, you know, with not this ill intent that you see sometimes on these forums, you know. And yeah. That's about it, really, and launch our new products that we announced. But yeah. Yeah. Well, we're excited about it. Um, you know, seeing all the new things of being, you know, a part of it and, and working with you and just you know, kind of hanging out and stuff <coughs> like this. It's a shameless plug here, by the way. <laughs> <clears throat> I also own a I'm part owner of a small uh, watch company called Geared Hardware. And when you said what's new, you know, big for me, is really focusing on geared hardware. Uh, it's a little watch company that I started with my best friend that uh, literally just coming out of surgery as we're speaking right now. Big buff guy, hernia, everything was fine. Then suddenly he had to be rushed in and it was like messaging with Steve, but he's fine. Oh, he's too stubborn. So I'm just getting the messages that just was a second ago. Sorry about that. <laughs> right. That's good. I hope everything works out all well. We'll have to check that one out too. Send us the send us the link to that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And like I told you, like, you know, you and I will talk after this because I mean we gotta put these boys to shame with their setups, you know. <laughs> it's definitely now he's gotta put me to shame. So that's what he's got that's what yeah. he's after. So uh, uh, yeah. Well, good man. Sorry. Well, I, I appreciate you uh joining us. We're we're gonna wrap this, we're gonna talk to you off off air here, but um, no problem, no problem. Appreciate everything Track Racer did at Daytona. Yeah. You know, check out you know, uh, Driving Life and then some other you know uh, Chandler Wellings uh, mm -hmm. Instagram for some stuff on there. But uh, Evan, man, I appreciate it, and uh, we'll thank talk you soon. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you all. What was going on? The nineteen and the one went past the five, but that's been replaced. And look at this restart. Woo! Way down to the inside. That is the Porsche not going for lead. Will make contact? Boy, that was close. The sixty. All right, guys, we're back, and hope you enjoyed that conversation uh, with Evan there from Track Racer. Uh, 
Dom and you obviously are on it right now. I got to drive it for the first time a couple of weeks ago when it actually made its way back because of you <laughs> right. and uh, you bringing it back and we did a photo shoot with it uh, in studio, but I'm hopefully I'm going to get it in my house here pretty yeah, soon. That's the next step. Yeah. To get it, you know, so I can race against you guys. Yeah. Everybody's like dying, like uh, on our, 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 sort of our Nashville crew that all came down there. They're sending me texts like, man, get that thing set up so we can yeah. start kicking your butt. I'm Which like, means yeah. I got to switch over. Cause I've been, I set my sim racer, my sim rig up on a set of Corso just to kind of practice yeah, and get the, you know, kind of get a feel for it, whatever. And I think I got to switch everything over to iRacing now. And yeah, you got to join us on iRacing. Yeah. Now. Get, get set up so that I can be in the same group yeah. with all these other guys <laughs> yeah. and get my butt kicked. A but, bunch of yahoos, but yeah, we'll, get, <laughs> we'll get after it. So yeah, good stuff. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. Let's talk a little bit about, about Daytona. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah. Lead up into it a little bit because I, I, when we left off at the end of the last season, which yeah. was November last year, I it was that I think Jody was the last one that we had. Yeah. So at that point we weren't ready or I don't know if we had, have, have we not announced anything. I don't think so. No. Okay. Cause I don't think we were ready to do that yet. We okay. weren't quite at that point. So, um, there's a, there's a lot going on at team TGM. One of the biggest, uh, the biggest of which I guess, um, is the switch in, uh, in platforms and in, in cars. Yeah, that was a big, uh, a big undertaking to 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 go from the Chevy Chevy Camaro um, that we'd been in for, I guess you, I mean, not really two years, say a year and a half, or yeah. whatever, because we didn't run twenty twenty, except for one race, and then, um, yeah, we make the port the switch back to uh, for the team back to the Porsche uh, GT four RS Club Sport that is brand new um, yeah. for Daytona. I mean, it was a brand new car that we got you know, first of January. No, actually got it right before Christmas. Yeah. And, and it's uh, a, bl- it's a brand new platform, brand for new Porsche. platform for them. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it was, um, this was a decision that was made a while ago, but it was, I think the right call that we did this. I mean, we, when we look at what we were going to do, it's like Ted drives that car yeah. a lot, which Ted is our owner for, for first time listeners. He owns T- team TGM and I drive with them in the 64 car. And so I felt like for him, like this was the best thing for him mm-hmm. to be in also. And the team ultimately made that call. That's not, I'm low man on the totem pole when it comes to that <laughs> stuff. But I think it was a great platform for him to be in. I think he adapted to it well. The team has been super busy. Um, not only were we running the GT4 race, which is the four-hour race on Friday, but then we were running the Rolex 24 also um, that started on Saturday and obviously ended on Sunday. But so we were super busy testing that car cause we still had possession of that car. Uh, mid December, we did a three day test at Daytona. Yeah. And so I felt like we'll talk about that car a little bit that since that was the first thing that we did in December, I felt like last year that not that we were going through the motions, we're good enough to be there, but it's like that car was so new to us and we're learning that car. And obviously we partnered with Wright Motorsports last year and this year. And it's just as a driver, you want to start developing what, what the characteristics of the car, what it does and what changes or what's going on with it. I have not been in that car since we ended last Last year. year. And so to do that test, I thought that we were, that was a good thing for us to do for myself and Matt and um, Matt Plum, the other driver at team TGM, because I think Hugh and Ted had drove it a little bit, you know, back in November, but Matt and I haven't been around the car at all. And so that was good just to kind of, make some changes, see what how the car reacts. And I felt like last year we were kind of just going through the motions. We were still quick, yeah. but I thought this year we actually, we came into it with a little bit different attitude and uh, we're going to learn the car and, and, and just be more of a contender, which I, certainly we were for sure uh, <laughs> this year. Yeah. I would in say that so. race. Yeah. So, but back to the GT four. Yeah. I mean, we got those cars before Christmas and my, the boys at team TGM seven days from the time we took delivery of them in Atlanta they were doing a two-day test at Sebring with them. Yeah. And I put 500 miles on one of those cars in two days. And it was pretty quick right out of the box, wasn't it? I mean, you were running. Yeah, we were we were happy with it. We're happy with You know, what, what was going comes. on. And yeah, and like, I mean, Porsche does a great job as far as the build on the car. There's some stuff we have to do internally in the team to get it ready for the trim that we wanted in. Um, and so that's what I mean. In seven days, those guys crushed it to get the thing on on track and do a shakedown test. And the car ran flawlessly. Um, in that test, no problems whatsoever. And then we go to Daytona for two weeks because now they do the preseason test yeah. the week before the race, which is, I, I have mixed emotions about it. I think 
I was going to ask you, did you like change your mailing address? Cause you were there for, a I was there for time. two weeks straight. Yeah. It felt, that's, it felt longer than that. Yeah. And that's the only thing that I don't really like about it is I, I like the time to go do the three days and then we get like a three week or two and a half week break. And then we can kind of, and I think for the teams too, I just think it's so compressed Yeah, and you're worried. Like if you have a problem, number one, the race weekend starts during that test weekend, really. I mean, even d- did that before, you know, with the three week gap, cause you want your team always to w- not fixing stuff. Yeah. They want, you want them developing the, co- the car. Um, so that that's only, I mean, if there's a pet peeve is, you know, you're on the road for so long, <laughs> but that's just the way it goes. And, um, and then you go right into the race weekend, but man, what, what a weekend for, for us, uh, and the Friday race that kind of kicked it off. And I knew we had a good piece coming out of the test. Uh, and we didn't run much during the, the race practice because it yeah, rained. It was rain. Yeah. But I knew Friday was going to be fine. And so we kind of sat on the sidelines and I knew the car was where it needed to be. And, uh, from what we'd learned during the test weekend. So I guess that, that maybe is a positive having the test so close to the race weekend that I knew we didn't need to do much if it was raining and the race was going to be in the dry while, while we going to run the car. Right. And so you um, didn't even qualify, did you? We did not. That's we elected thought, yeah. not to, um, which in hindsight, the, the, it was kind of wet and dry a little bit. It ended up being a slick, you know, going on slicks, but it was still a damp track. And we'd already committed to not running, you know, at that point yeah. with Ted to qualify. It, and we just said, you know what, we got a good piece. Let's not, you know, put it in jeopardy on, on hurting the car for any, any reason. Not that he's going to do anything, but somebody runs into you, just anything, you know, right. the race is what pays. Yeah qualifying really doesn't matter and um and so yeah we got the thing in the race and the thing was it was fast yeah so just so everybody kind of knows how that format lays out in that four-hour race on friday in the pilot michelin pilot series there's two classes in there right the gs class and tcr and tcr and you know the difference is the gs class th- those cars are a lot faster and i don't know what the delta what's the uh daytona it's about uh, six seconds, maybe yeah. so, but it's probably more there than any, anywhere else. Right. So cars are a little bit faster. There's a little bit, you know, there's a, there's a difference. So there's in the GS class, there's 22 cars. Was that correct? Yeah, there was 22. There was, yeah. And I think there was 20 cars and yeah, there was like 40 total. I think. Yeah, yeah. 40 or 42 cars total, uh, in the field. And so again, there's just, there's all kinds of things that go into this. And Actually, the, there was more than that. 22 in the GTD car. In the, G- in the Rolex 24. I think there was closer to 30 in our class. Was there? Yeah, I think so. You're but right. Cause it was solid. 22 in the, in, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Anyway, there was a bunch of cars. And so there's a minimum drive time. There's two drivers, you and Ted, mm-hmm. Ted, Ted leads, you know, leads starts, the, yeah. starts the race. Um, minimum drive time, 40 minutes. So it is 40 minutes yeah. there. So Ted's driving 40 minutes does exactly. Does exactly what he needs to do. Yeah. Keeps the car clean and right gives you an opportunity to get in the car. You're still on the, on the lead lap. Yeah. Um, everything's good. And you're in 40th place. Yeah. Because the TCR cars at the time were on the lead lap. So we kind of shuffled back, but then I kind of go through by the them. pit stop yeah, and the driver change. change and, yeah. So we probably, I mean, by we were at the end of the GS field. Let's yeah. say that. Yeah. So, and then you proceeded to just kind of methodically <laughs> pick your way through the field, which was pretty impressive. So, you know, from our vantage point where I was at, you know, we're standing up on in the infield on top of the motorhome, and you could really see the infield section really well, and you could see the bus stop coming back there on the back stretch uh, really well. Your braking was, I mean, this is where races are, you know, speed is made in, the, in turning and, and yeah. slowing down braking. And it seemed like you just had that car was on rails for you because every time you were going to the bus stop, there was somebody else going you know, yeah, you were going by somebody. going by somebody else. Yeah, yeah, the car was. I mean, we were. I mean, Porsche is known for the brakes, and in my history and my background is mainly in Porsches a lot. So I mean, yeah. not not I, I gel with anything we we drive. So it's not. Well, you want a championship in a Mercedes? In Mercedes so. Yeah, so it's not like oh, it's got to be this. But I love any car we drive. Period. Yeah. Um, and I love the Camaro and the Mercedes and all of it. But this car, I, I just knew we were in a good spot to be in. And Daytona probably is probably one of the best tracks for this car because it's so small. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't have as much frontal area as some of the other GT4 cars. So Daytona plays into our hands a little bit too, is that the track layout adapts for this car uh, as well. And um, 
And like we go back to why we didn't run qualifying. I knew the car was so good that yeah. we didn't need to be doing anything to hurt it. And, you know, we kind of methodically get our way. I think we get all the way to like sixth or seventh. And then we have a green flag stop. And my boys took us from that to like second. Yeah. And they, they're the ones that they gave me the track position I needed. So I didn't have to fight those cars anymore. And then at that point, I thought, I don't think we left the top three the rest of the day. No. Cause then that. I don't know how long it took to get into the lead, but with 30 minutes left in the race in a four hour endurance race, 30 minutes left, you take the lead on a restart. Yeah. Which if you haven't seen the replay, we'll see if I can get that in yeah, here. It's on YouTube. This yeah. Is, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty impressive. It was probably the, the, well, it was definitely the restart of the weekend. I'll say that, but, um, so yeah, that was pretty impressive. Uh, and you drive to the front, get to the front and then I don't know, seven, seven minutes left to go. Yeah. Um, somewhere in there. We're under 10. Yeah. yeah. One of the Porsches, uh, catches me and it had been the car, it, that car had been kind of the class of the field and, you know, all day. And so it's not, I mean, we were running with that car mm -hmm. most of the day, but you know, we just didn't have the straight line speed. We had done some different things on the wing settings in the rear for us. And Hey, look, it, it, good drivers in that car too. Yeah. But I'm not, I was going to fight them as long as I could. And I, I did everything that I knew how to keep them behind me. He just got a, he got a good run on me out of the bus stop and drove by me. I mean, yeah. there's no, I tried to side draft him as hard as he was side drafting me and my car was not, not as good through the air as this was. Yeah. So it didn't, I mean, Hey, and that, I, that's that, like a win for us though. Oh, totally. And that car ultimately wins the race. You yeah. come in second, right? You're, yeah. you're P2. Um, but that car was noticeably quicker all, all day long, like, you know, the entire race. Um, but I think the fact that how you drove to the front, they started in the front. They started in the front. Yeah. yeah. And you drove to the front and then took the lead and maintained it and, you know, held them off as long as you could. Unbelievably fun for me to experience to be there for all of us that were there you know in support of you and team tgm it was absolutely incredible now i know maybe you can walk us a little bit through through the end because it was it <laughs> was I, wait, amazing I did, how i didn't get to enjoy the podium <laughs> yeah that's that's where i'm at so it, drink your water <laughs> see i'm drinking my water right now the medical staff at, at daytona um yeah, so, oh, so we go back because the car is new. So our drink bottle system is a little bit different. And I mean, not different. We didn't have it set up. Yeah. Let's, let's just put it that way. We did have stuff in there. So it wasn't like the team just left me and said, you're on your own for yeah. three hours and figure have it out. Fun. Um, we had some camelbacks in there and they had it kind of loop. We have this netting that comes through on the side, you know, on either side. And so they had it looped through there. I just forgot it was even there because it's something out of the norm that I don't do. It normally comes through my helmet and the tube yeah. there. And, and then you talk about the, the 28 car, I'd shut the air off the last two hours of the race during green. I wouldn't run the air condition and it, it, and not saying the air conditions, like it's not cold. It's like lukewarm, but I shut that off. We didn't have a cool suit or anything that was plugged into, but it, it, so, so I get out of the car or after we take the checker, the drilling just kind of drops from you. Yeah. And I just said, boys, man, I am cramping everywhere and I need somebody to meet me at the car and, um, I need some water. Like now, like I'm just, I mean, I, I guess I was in worse shape than I really thought I was. Um, so yeah, I, I come to victory lane and they kind of carry me through there and I do a interview with the IMSA radio, which sounds terrible. It sounded like I'd been out all night drinking on broadway <laughs> is what it sounded like and so they my mouth was so dry at that time like yeah. i couldn't even like i was trying to put a sentence together and i couldn't like hardly talk and then the medical staff they just that's where they kind of meet me john terry was kind of carried me in there because i was not walking on my own yeah. and they said yeah you're coming with us and they took me away and put two ivs in me and Man, in 45 minutes, I was actually really in good shape, and I showed it back up at where the boys were with the yeah. track racer. Yeah. And then, like at 8:30, I showed up over there. But the best thing was they had a great dinner cook, so I went over there like, oh "My gosh, you shouldn't even be over here." I said, "No, I feel great." Like here, so they fed me, and um, so I was worth it. Ted got on the podium. All, yeah, it all was worth great. it, except I missed the podium. We went back Saturday morning and took some pictures, so him and I could at least enjoy it together. Yeah, and it was it was fun to watch. So we, you know, of course we're standing outside of victory lane right there, you know, watching the whole thing. It was, it was great to see Ted 
up there enjoying that moment. That smile. I mean, that's I've seen pictures. Yeah. I will. I mean, I mean, not put myself on the deathbed, but I will do anything to have that for him to make that happen for him. And I'm so glad that happened. I don't we're both part of it. And I've told him that like he did his job as much as I did my job. And and that was a great thing to to see that day. Yeah. Yeah. So that was it was a bittersweet moment, you know, more than ecstatic you know, for him, it was kind of a bummer not having you up there at the same time, but it actually worked to his okay. advantage for the champagne. When they did all the champagne, they were spraying <laughs> it because that, you know, you get one bottle and psh, everybody's kind of out of it. Well, he realized he yeah, had two. two. <laughs> and so he really, he's like, ah, it was a funny story. He's like, Hey man, he's like, I mean, I really want you up there, but this actually worked out to my advantage because I sprayed mine, emptied mine. Then everybody's kind of walking around and he's like, I realized I had a second one. I had yours there. So I drenched them while they didn't have anything. So they had no ammo and he got them all in the face. I think so. Yeah. So he loved yeah. that. So, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I, I just, like I said, I'm happy for him and our team and we're going to do more of this this year. And we were so close to end of last year at road Atlanta and I'm, yeah, I am determined like hell to get him. We're going to get him a win at some point and we're going to do what we need to do to make that yeah. happen. So, yeah. Well, and I think, you know, hopefully Daytona is a precursor for the rest of the season because it was a great way to start yeah. the season. And, uh, you know, I'm sure this car is going to be great. And, you know, the, like you said, the team knows what they're doing. So it's not like you're re you're starting from scratch here. No, this team is, I mean, built to win championships and races and, yeah. and, um, yeah, we struggled a little bit with the Chevy. Some of that was our fault. Some of it wasn't our fault, but, um, I feel like we're, we're on the right track and we got momentum going the right way. And, what a great way to start, you know, the Friday race. And then Saturday was really good too, man. I mean, or, you know, we started off good and, you know, the Rolex 24 and we partnered with Wright Motorsports. And that, that was so fun for me. I don't know if we want to jump ship to this right now, but yeah, go ahead. Um, John Wright ran that car, Wright Motorsports. They ultimately ended up winning the race, yep. with the 16 car, which was great for them. And, but John Wright, actually, I used to work for John and John was on the box with us. And when I say that, like he was calling the race, you know, for us and on the radio and, and, um, and so I, I used to work for him a long time ago when I was struggling to find a ride and, you know, that, that was, that was fun for me to be with him kind of during the, the test weekend and then during the race weekend and yeah. just, you know, he knows how hard I've worked to get where we are today. And like, you know, it was just fun to have him there with me and, um, the whole time and shoot, we end up seventh you know, yeah. uh, 22 and we, we were the second Porsche, yeah. you know, in class uh, behind the 16 car, which won the race. And, and so I, we, it was just a great weekend for Ted and I'm so happy we, we accomplished the gold yeah. plus that we wanted to finish in that race. Cause we, unfortunately Cause last year, yeah, we had an issue, had a gearbox shifter problem at right. the end in like, we, well, like four or five hours from the end, I think. So that to do that, we finished, but I think we ultimately passed our goal. Oh, I think, I think so. top 10 was kind of like, all right, can we be top 10? But to be seventh and like we were, I was going to say, and there was a real shot to be top five. I mean, there was, yeah. I mean, I think if we had a couple of things go right a little, a little bit, differently, yeah, a little differently, we probably could have been. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, I'm so happy. And that shows potential for him also yeah. on the people that he's got around him, around Ted and stuff and what he surrounded himself with. So I think that shows that the strength of our team. And that was, uh, that was a cool race to be a part of super cold that night, oh my you know, God. through the nighttime, brutal but, cold. Um, luckily no rain or anything like that, but yeah. you know, it was cold and windy, but it was dry. It was dry. So that's so, good. Yeah. Yeah. And fans, we were back in the paddock. This is the one thing, you know, we talk about this all the time about IMSA. We were able to, to do the all the, yeah, to get back there and do the fan walk and, and, you know, do all the things that we haven't done. And I don't, think that anybody was disappointed by that because it was jam packed on it the was. fan walk. I mean, it's just like I mean, it's so fun for everybody. Daytona's unique in its way and it's the sixtieth running of it this past year. And yep. I mean, just the you know, always love going to that track and seeing the fans back in the paddock. Yeah, last year, you know, it was in the bubble and but yeah. you, you snuck in a little bit last year. But um yeah, I'm glad everybody, like the crew from Nashville got to come in there, you know, yeah. and they didn't last year. And, but just for everybody, like to be able to get close back to the cars. And that's what it's all about for us to. Well, I think last year we had one motor home. This year we had two. It sounds like next there's, year. There's three. There's three. Uh, this thing just keeps growing. There was people from South Carolina. Uh, yeah. They're all over the place. So uh, we're bringing, we're bringing the heat to. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah, so. it, and it's like, if people are listening, like, oh, I want to go to this race and that this is how this all started. Cause they called me and they were like, Hey, we're going to come because we're going to run, you know, TGM announced that we're going to run the 24 mm -hmm. and they're like, should we get a hotel rooms or get motorhomes? I'm like, no, nah, man, you got to get a motor. You got to get, you got to be in the infield, man, if you're going to do this right. And so, I mean, if nobody's ever experienced this race, you need to get down there. And if you're a NASCAR fan, I mean, yeah. it's just a fun time. Everybody's enjoying themselves like they have probably are any race, but I mean, it's just a cool thing with this going on, you know, yeah. for 24 hours and the, and the lead up to it is, I mean, people are partying all the, all the time. Yeah. And know? I think, you know, I mean, it's been described as the, you know, the Super Bowl of the season, you know, I mean, yeah. it's like the first race is the biggest race, kind of like Daytona and NASCAR. It is for and, NASCAR and, yeah. and for us going to Sebring, like these first two events are huge. Yeah. You know, they're big events and, yeah. and just like big parties and stuff, but people are having a great time and enjoying themselves and, and definitely the motor home is the way to go. Yeah. Definitely being on the infield is the <laughs> yeah. way to go. I mean, yeah. just, just driving around, walking around, meeting the people, talking to people. I mean, it's just, it and is I do that so like, I, cause I, I'm in the driver light. And so I get, a, I mean, even during the test weekend and then during the race weekend, I got up every morning and went just for a light jog, but it's always fun for me to go do that. You know, it's one of the things I like staying at the track and just to kind of go through the infield and see everybody or, you know, see some people that haven't been to bed yet. Yeah. Part of my crew was that because <laughs> I did, I ran by and they were like, ah, we haven't gone to bed yet. <laughs> I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's like eight o'clock in the morning and you're still up. But yeah, and a little, I think, interesting little tidbit there was where we were parked on the infield was part of the NBC. It That's was like I a heard. security. It was this little secured area in the infield, and we've got, you know, 20 of us yahoos, and then, I don't know, a couple buses down was Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, Jack Roush was in there for a little while. His bus was in there for a while. Um, we tried to get junior's attention to come sit on the sim rig i mean i don't see how you guys got up in the high class of the i don't know facility, how it man. happened either well like, that's sweeney those <laughs> yeah, guys yeah, sweeney and yeah. chandler yeah kind of they pulled that they off. make that stuff happen but um yeah, dude it was so much fun daytona was a blast yeah this year yeah a lot of fun i mean it was good to have everybody there i remember you know getting out of the car on the on the friday race and I mean, I could feel the energy from everybody, you know, that was part of our team. I just like, I mean, I was in bad shape, but it's like, I could feel that energy still. And that was so cool for me to like, Hey, it's not just me. It's, I mean, everybody was there and they're all a part of it. So it was, uh, it was cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we got the rest of the season in front of us. So I'm yeah. excited about that. I think I've got plans. So I'm going to do, I'm, I'm working, we're working on a couple of different things. Um, and my plans are to hit, I think I've got six of six or seven six races. races on my schedule to, to drive and to, and to hit and be a part of, um, we got a couple other things going on. I mean, we got some stuff. Yeah. We got we some other about. stuff. Yeah. We got, I mean, driving life, we're doing our own track days at Polecat, you yeah. know, which is in Lynchburg and, um, that's going to kick off this spring. I think I've got, what well, we got 10 dates yeah. you know, booked down there. So you'll be seeing more about that and, and yeah. on our um, social media stuff. And so, yeah, it's all good stuff. I mean, it's just, you know, we're getting ready to hit it full stride here in the summertime and we'll be busy, you know, with all the races, but this, this program it will not go away. It'll keep growing and yeah, we'll keep, you know, and I think that's our, our, little, our little two man show as much as we can <laughs> devote to it. We're going to keep doing it. Yeah. So. And I, I mean, right now, I think our plan is to do a monthly, Yeah, you know, I, I think I'm pretty confident we can do, you know, a monthly, show like this and then we'll we'll fill in with some of the other stuff i think that's what we don't want to overcommit on one end and then not and then under deliver on another because i yeah. think we got a lot of things going on that we can um you know we're gonna have a lot of opportunity for sharing and and doing some different things so yeah stay with us you know monthly here on the podcast and then just uh check our social media out uh you know driving life on instagram uh facebook, facebook. Yep. YouTube. All that stuff. Yeah. And our website and stuff. And then definitely as we wrap this episode up, you know, the Trans Am series starts um, yeah. in Sebring here in two weeks, February 27th, I think is the race on that so, Sunday. Yeah. And, or maybe the TA race is on the 26th and then TA too. But uh, the shop that we're in, Ken's bringing it big time. And he's running four cars. Four cars. We'll get into it with him. We'll have him on actually after that weekend. And um, 
he's doing two in TA and two in TA two. And then obviously Scott Borchetta, local guy here in Nashville yep. for our locals here. He'll, he'll, he'll be in TA two also. And we'll have Scott on at some point. He's been on our list and I've talked to him about it. It's just been scheduling conflicts with, He's he's pretty busy. He's, he's, a little, he's a little busy. Yeah, so. he's, he's got some stuff going. And then we can't forget about the Music City Grand Prix. Yeah, uh, you know that'll be here before you. Know. Dude, I'm so excited about this year. There's a lot going on. A lot going on, man. So, um, yeah, hope everybody hang in there and hope you enjoyed Edmund. Go go visit Track Racer. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not just saying that because I the first thing I jumped on this rig uh, was when it got back to Nashville when you brought it back and and. You know, look, I'm not a sim guy. I, I, not that I've neglected, like, uh, I'm not doing that. I've been so busy. But then I jumped on that thing. I'm like, man, this thing actually, the way it's built and as rigid as it is, it gives you good feedback through the wheel and everything. Yeah. And the, the chassis doesn't move. And it's not like flexing and all this stuff. So you, you actually get, I'm going to start using it more because it's going to be at my house, number one. But right. <laughs> um, it, it's going to be definitely a tool that I'm going to put on tap to use like as we go to sebring i'm gonna be on that baby yeah driving so yeah. i gotta keep up with these young boys so <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure all right man hey this has been a pleasure yeah it's good to be back man yeah, it's nice yeah look forward to doing it more as we uh continue throughout the year stay with us uh you know come along for the ride yep see you guys see you